In this video, I'll be going through the basics of double integrals. Namely, I'll, I'll talk about well, the problem that motivates double integrals, which is finding volumes and finding volumes under surfaces, I should say. And I'll talk about how we approximate these volumes and how we can sometimes find them explicitly. So. So double integrals are um, a generalization of integrals from one variable, um, and they're motivated by a similar problem. So let me give something specific. Say that we want to find the volume under the surface under the surface z equals 5 minus x squared minus y squared and over the rectangle uh, 0, 1 cross 0, 2 in the xy plane. So what exactly is this volume? Let me draw the picture. So here's three-dimensional coordinates. And this rectangle in the xy plane just corresponds to this rectangle right here. And now the portion of this surface that's above this rectangle looks like the following. Um, we could draw a few traces to see what it looks like. When y is 0, we have 5 minus x squared. It sort of goes that way. When x is 0, we have 5 minus y squared, which goes all the way to here. And then maybe when x is 1, we have 4 minus y squared as a curve right here, which goes this way. So we have this shape above the rectangle. And the problem is to find the volume under this. So now I'll be talking about, uh, well, a partial way of solving this, which is how do we approximate the volume? And how do we find it explicitly? That'll be, uh, that's related to something called iterated integrals. So to approximate the volume uh, under the surface, we approximate the, region, the, the figure with rectangular prisms. So to approximate the volume, we do that with rectangular prisms. And what I mean by that is, well, I'm going to take the rectangle in the xy plane. Here, I'll draw it separately. And maybe I'll divide this into four rectangles. So here I'm going one half to one, one, two. And now maybe I'll evaluate the function at each of the points on the corners to get the height of a rectangular prism. So what that looks like in the picture if I draw this rectangle and divide it into four sub-rectangles, evaluate the function that I started with at this point to give me a height of a rectangular prism, I get this, and evaluate the function, say, here to give me a height of a rectangular prism right there, and so forth. You do this at at the other points. To get some shape like this, and this is, a, although this looks strange, the idea is that it's supposed to sort of fit 
um, its volume is supposed to be similar to the volume under the surface, and it's easy to compute the volumes of these um, rectangular prisms. So the way we actually do that is, uh, well, the, the function that we have, just recall, is this. And the volume of, say, the rectangular prism here, it has a height of the value of f at 0, 0. It has uh, width 1 half and length 1. So this is the volume of 1 of one of those uh, rectangular prisms. And we add up all of the other volumes of rectangular prisms. So that corresponds to evaluating the function at here, multiply by the area of the rectangle below. So this is, should be thought of as height times area of the base. And we do this at this point and this point as well. So I'll have 0, 1, height times area of base, and then finally 1 half, 1 times this. And if you add all of this up for this particular function, we get our approximation for the volume to be 8.75. And what we've computed here is a basic example of a Riemann sum. But now let me talk about a way that we can find this volume explicitly. And that involves uh, iterated integrals. Well, let me give some notation. Um, the way we write this volume is with the following. Uh, we use two integral signs, um, and we write the region over which we're finding the volume, and we write uh, the function the function that we're finding the volume under, and then this is supposed to be sort of a change in area. So this is the notation for a double integral, and it, it makes sense for functions um, for functions that aren't necessarily positive. But here, when they're positive, it, we can think of this as finding volume. And the way we usually do this explicitly is to uh, turn this into an iterated integral. And so there's a theorem you need to do this, but, but let me just give you the basic idea. If you have this volume that we want to find. One way to think of it is to break up the volume into a bunch of slices and figure out the volume of the slice by approximating it with the area of the cross section times a little change in y. So that's the way we can think of this as an iterated integral because the area of the cross section will be the area under this curve right here. Namely, I pick a specific y value and then the area under this curve will just be represented by this integral with respect to x. So x goes from 0 to 1. And we're finding the area under here. Notice this integral is just an integral with respect to x. But we have this y in here. And the idea is we've chosen a specific y. And uh, we want to find um, the area of this cross section multiplied by a little change of y to approximate uh, the volume of this slice, and we'd want to add up a whole bunch of slices. And in the end, the thing you get is two integrals in a row. So the way we would find the volume explicitly is to 
evaluate this thing, which you do this integral with respect to x, it gives you something involving y, and then you do this integral with respect to y. I'll go through more details later, but the answer that you get in the end, in case you're curious, is 20 thirds, which is about 6.67.